Hello everyone and welcome along to this workshop on making your bioinformatics workflows findable and citable. My name is Melissa Burke and I'm the Australian Biocommons Training and Communications Officer and I'm also going to be your host for this workshop. Before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the traditional owners and their custodianship of the lands on which we meet today. Today, our team is joining you from the lands of the Turrbal and Yagara people, the Gadigal people and the Kana people. We pay our respects to their ancestors and their descendants who continue cultural and spiritual connections to country. And we recognize their valuable contributions to Australian and global society. To begin, I thought I'd share a little bit about why the Australian Biocommons is hosting this particular workshop today. So here at the Australian Biocommons, we are building digital capability for life science research with the goal of ensuring that Australian researchers remain globally competitive. The Bring Your Own Data project is a key part of this vision, and it's a collaboration between many Australian organisations, those of which you see on your screen now. The goal of the project is to bring highly accessible, available and scalable data analysis and sharing capabilities to all Australian life science researchers. Improving the accessibility of command line bioinformatics at national and institutional infrastructures is an important aspect of this project and one where workflows is playing a really big part. For example, we're both collaboratively building pipelines that can be deployed on different infrastructures uh, that meet the needs of the community in terms of scale and reproducibility. And we're also supporting others to develop and share their workflows. So this is where today's workshop comes in. And it's a really great chance for us to share with you some of the things that we've learned in, in making this project happen and to help you apply those to your own research as well. Today, we have two members of this project joining us to share their expertise. We have Dr. Johan Gustafsson, who's the Bioinformatics Engagement Officer with Australian Biocommons. And he's really been championing the use of workflow registries like Workflow Hub for making those outputs more visible and findable and citable. Dr. Georgina Samaha from the Sydney Informatics Hub, where she's a senior bioinformatician, is also joining us today. And Georgie has been really instrumental in developing some of the workflows that we have been working on as part of this project and supporting others to use them as well. So that is all for me for now. I am now going to hand over to Johan to help you get started thinking about your workflows and how to make them findable. Over to you, Johan. Uh, so thanks, Melissa, for that great introduction. Um, with that, I think we can jump um, straight into it. So today we were going to cover a few things. Um, in this first introductory piece, um, I want to cover topics like why you would want to make a workflow findable, um, where you might typically find workflows, um, as well as a theoretical introduction to one of the workflow registries, Workflow Hub. Um, I'm then going to do a, a live demo um, of uh, registering a workflow by importing from a GitHub repository. Um, and as Melissa just described, we're then going to do a um, bring your own workflow type session where you've got where you'll have the opportunity to, to register your, your own workflows. Um, the learning outcomes for today, um, I think are pretty straightforward. Um, you should be able to register with Workflow Hub, create and join teams and spaces. Of course, register workflows. Um, but then also understand um, what are those things that um, you should be maintaining to have a best, pra best practice workflow in a registry. Um, and then also the ability to create a digital object identifier so that uh, you and others can start citing um, your workflows. So we'll start with why you would want to make workflows findable. Um, Hopefully it's not too big a surprise to say that workflows are really, really important. Um, I've picked one particular example, which is the 
um, best practice um, galaxy workflows um, that are being used to serve up um, global SARS-CoV-2 um, data. Um, but in principle, um, workflows are everywhere and they support a lot of research um, and yet they're not very findable. If you look at the numbers themselves, there are more than 300 workflow languages um, at the moment. Um, and uh, looking at one of the big community um, efforts, uh, Nextflow Core, um, there are more than 1.3 million clones um, of their workflows to date. And if you expand that and look at some of the workflow holdings um, that exist um, on um, the registries um, that I'm going to mention today, so Doc Store and Workflow Hub, but also the, uh, the big Galaxy instances, you can see that there are already workflows out there um, available for you to find. Um, but at the moment, it's all about looking in the right place. Workflows can also be complex. Um, they can be time consuming and maintenance heavy. Um, they can be difficult to find. Once you've found them, they can be difficult to redeploy and they're actually duplicated by many. And so because of this, th these, are, these are artifacts that should be findable. Uh, if you make them findable, um, there's a greater chance that they're going to be reused. And if you, if you can then make them citable as well and have those instructions be clear, um, then they'll be cited. Um, and the impacts of this shouldn't be too surprising. Um, it's all about reducing replication of effort, um, recognizing that effort when someone reuses, making sure they're able to cite. Um, so emphasizing the importance of workflows as, um, as an artifact supporting research. Um, but also things like driving collaborations and ensuring reproducibility. So where can you find workflows at the moment? Um, so there's a few key places you can find workflows. Um, the first one are the community platforms um, and repositories. So I've picked two examples here, one of which is Galaxy, the other one of which is Nextflow Core. These are really good exemplars because they are convergence points for community effort in creating workflows. So they're a pretty good place to start if you don't know where to start. You can of course go directly to GitHub if you become aware of workflows or they're linked from publications, which is another pri which is another primary source. Um, but then there's the one common link here, which is search engines, and that's the primary way that most people will actually find anything, um, including research software. Um, but as part of this workshop, I I would ask you to consider a registry and for the reasons that are um, listed on this slide. The first one is that they are central, right? So they are a convergence point for many, many efforts uh, within research. Um, they can be convergence points for single GitHub repositories that get registered, workflow language specific registries like NF Core, right? They'll register their workflows in a registry. Big research consortia, right? They, they will all converge on a registry and it makes it more findable because you know where to go to search. Um, both the registries themselves are searchable. So if you know that a registry exists, you can go there and, you and you're searching a much smaller subset um, of, what you, of what you might find um, if you enter the same search terms into a search engine. But using a search engine, you will also find those same registered workflows. Uh, and at that point, it comes down to how well annotated um, the workflow is. A registry is integrated. Um, so um, Workflow Hub, for example, allows you to directly import uh, from um, uh, GitHub. And that means you're not replacing uh, the version control system. You're not replacing your development space for workflows. So the registry becomes a value add rather than a replacement. They're also standardized. So the registry will guide you through um, best practice for what you should be annotating your workflow with. Um, as we've already mentioned, um, there's the citability side. So um, the registries that uh, I'll mention today um, have the capability to generate DOIs for your workflows and therefore you can make your work citable. 
Um, and finally, a registry makes your work interoperable. Um, this is one I particularly like, and this is because of the example I have here. So the Biocommons created uh, an assembly workflow guide. Um, and because of, uh, because of Workflow Hub and the fact that we'd registered the workflow there, we could embed a link directly into that guide, which when you click it, launches that workflow on Galaxy. So the end user doesn't see any of the um, um, integrations that exist, but the fact that the registry exists allows you to do that. So there are two key options in terms of registries at the moment. Um, the first one is DocStore, and the one that we're going to be talking about today is Workflow Hub. Uh, if you um, do a high level comparison of these two, you will see that the registries are very, very similar. Um, so they allow you to register workflows. Um, they have a standard metadata set. They integrate with Git. Um, you can generate DOIs. Um, they have structural elements. So DocStore has organizations, Workflow Hub has spaces and teams. Um, and when you look at workflows, um, DocStore has a focus on uh, Whittle, CWL, Nextflow, and Galaxy, um, whereas Workflow Hub um, has have set themselves up to be workflow agnostic. So it, it's all workflow types. Doesn't matter what they're what they're written in. Um, we work directly with Workflow Hub, so we have a direct collaboration um, with the Workflow Hub team, um, and that's why we have a focus on making use of that of that platform. That being said, if there's um, sufficient interest in in DocStore and its capabilities, it's possible that we could do a repeat of this type of workshop, but focused on DocStore. Um, so now I wanted to get to um, Workflow Hub and do a bit of a theoretical intro to the platform before we um, before we do a live demo. Um, so when you first visit um, Workflow Hub, um, this is what you will see. Um, like most registries and repositories, when you first visit it, it can look a bit intimidating, um, but it's actually incredibly straightforward to use. Um, so what I've done is for both the um, setting yourself up on Workflow Hub and registering workflows, I've broken it down into four steps and hopefully they'll be, they'll be very clear. Um, the first one is that you need to register with the platform. Um, now you have two options. You can actually create a Workflow Hub account, um, or you can actually use your GitHub credentials to log in. Right? So you have the two options there. Once you've registered, um, the very first thing you'll need to do is to um, choose a space. Now, the space is the biggest organizational unit within Workflow Hub. And so my advice would be, if, you have, if you're an individual researcher or you're a, uh, representing a research group, uh, where you don't need a lot of complexity in how you set up a, a registry presence, um, I would probably suggest you join the independent team space um, and just create a team within there. Uh, I've included the Australian Biocommons space as an example, um, and I'll get into and I'll show you some examples of the structure we have uh, in a minute. Um, you then join a team or create one. Um, so I've included an example here of the Galaxy Australia team, which exists within the uh, Biocommons space. Um, it's worth noting that this entire process of um, joining or creating spaces, um, creating teams um, and um, filling in uh, organization details um, can all be accomplished through one wizard, right? So. Um, it may seem complicated, but a lot of this, uh, as you'll see when we um, when we look at Workflow Hub later, is actually quite straightforward. Um, the final step then is to begin adding items. So today we're going to focus in on uh, workflows, um, but as you can see on this slide, it's actually possible to add other artifacts into Workflow Hub um, as well. Um, so just to give you an example then of, of what this might look like in practice, um, this is another team that exists in the Biocommon space uh, called QCIF Bioinformatics. Um, within their team, um, they've registered um, three workflows. And the way that this looks in practice is you have the space, then you have the team, and then you have the things that they've registered. So three workflows, and they happen to also have registered a publication um, there as well. 
Um, a note is that these structures are flexible. Um, so in these two scenarios, um, there are different, um, these two workflows that have been created by different teams across different spaces have been set up a little bit differently. So in, the, in scenario A, um, you see that um, three teams from two different spaces have created two different workflows um, and they've made them part of what's called a collection uh, and that's what ties them together. But over here, you can see that individual teams from two spaces both contributed to a workflow, one of which has been added to a collection. So there's a lot, there's a lot of possibilities in how you set Workflow Hub up, um, particularly as, as your need to attribute across say big research consortia um, comes into play. Um, and here's the example um, of the biocommon space that I mentioned before. So you can see that we have, we have the biggest unit um, being the space. We have multiple teams. Those teams sometimes share workflows. So the workflows are the, um, in yellow boxes here. Um, and we also choose to group these together into collections. And so um, both of these should be fairly self-explanatory, right? So we have a HiFi genome assembly collection, which uh, groups together workflows for genome assembly, um, and one that groups together workflows from the BYD project that uh, Melissa introduced earlier. So finally, now we'll get to registering a workflow uh, after all that preamble. Um, so the very first step when you um, are creating a new workflow is to um, either upload, uh, import, or access the main executable file for your workflow. Uh, the top, uh, in the top panel here, uh, this is the option for uploading or importing a file. Um, so you can do that from your local workstation um, or via a remote URL. Um, the one that I'm going to go into in a bit more detail today is the import directly from um, a Git repository. There is a third option, uh, which is importing research object crates. Um, for the moment, that's outside the scope uh, of this workshop, but I've included some links here um, in case you wanted to do a bit of additional reading on um, research object crates. All right, so once you've uh, selected your target repository, um, it will ask, so Workflow Hub will ask you whether you want to import from a branch uh, or from a um, tag. So here I'm showing um, selection of a tag. Once you click register, you'll then be asked to assign um, the main executable file. So you just click there, this little dialog will open and you select, uh, whichever file is the main executable. When you've done this, you then have the option of um, adding or updating um, metadata. Um, many of the things that you see here will actually get imported um, either from your um, GitHub um, or from the actual workflow file. Um, so because this was a Galaxy file, that's auto-detected. It'll pull in things like the title, the description. Um, it will also pull in things like creators, um, license, if it's available. Um, what I've tried to do here is indicate those things which um, deserve attention when you're first registering a workflow. So those things that um, you need to look at, which typically won't be populated because they don't exist yet, um, are the ontology terms. Um, you need to review the visibility. So who can see your workflow? You know, is it public? Is it private? Are you gonna share it with other people um, on Workflow Hub? Um, and the custom tags. Um, so a brief note on um, the ontology terms. Um, so some of you may not have heard of the EDIM ontology. Um, it's an ontology of bioinformatics operations data types, topics, and formats. Um, I'd highly recommend using it um, if your workflows uh, are in the bioinformatics space. Um, and if you are using EDEM, you can't go past this tool that um, the EDEM team have created called EDEM Browser. Um, it allows you not only to navigate 
but also search um, the Edom ontology. So it makes it really, really easy to find the right annotations. Um, once you've updated that metadata and you're happy with it, um, you need to review. Um, and that's just making sure that then all of the individual bits and pieces are correct um, for your new workflow. Um, I can also highly suggest going and looking at workflows um, that are best practice. Um, I've included an example here, including the, um, the DOI link. Um, and the kinds of things that you look for in a best practice uh, registry entry are um, some structured documentation that's been pulled in from GitHub, um, uh, a diagram of the workflow, um, a complete author list that's uh, in the correct order as well. Um, and that's important because when you generate a DOI, um, um, that's gonna be the citation basically for the workflow. So you wanna make sure that you have the authors in the right order. Um, a license, um, which, which then allows people to reuse your workflow when they've actually found it, um, and those annotations, which not only make it easier to find um, the workflow within the registry, but improves, improves the findability overall. All right, so we're now gonna to move to a live demo. Um, and so what I'm gonna do for this demo is make use of the development instance of, um, of Workflow Hub. Um, so that's what this looks like. Um, it's effectively a, um, uh, it's a way for you to test Workflow Hub. So create, um, um, test the workflow registration process um, to learn more about it and uh, basically to make that decision about, you know, is, is, is this right for, um, uh, right for me and for my research program. Um, there are a couple of ways you can create new workflows. Um, the first one uh, is under the create menu. And so you can create a workflow here, um, but you can also push the big contribute button um, on the front. So what we wanna do is we're gonna be importing a Git repository. So we select that second option here. And then into that, um, into this field, we paste um, the URL for the, for the um, um, GitHub repository that we want to import. The repository that I'm importing is one that um, sits within the Biocommons organization. Um, and it's for a HiFi genome assembly um, workflow. Okay, so if we push the register button, um, it's gonna go and retrieve um, repository details. Um, we wanna use the tags um, for the repository and we wanna use the latest one. And then again, we click register. Um, as you might recall from the slides, we then get to selecting the main executable. And so here, a click, you select the um, executable. You see it's auto detected the workflow type. You can also add a new workflow type here if it's one that's not recognized. You also have two options here. This is where you can add a diagram um, when you're um, doing, um, when you're registering the workflow. You also have the option of adding um, an abstract um, CWL here as well. So then we push continue. Um, and you'll see here that um, in doing a um, repository import, uh, we've actually had many of these fields filled already. So the Galaxy workflow type, um, there's a title included, um, a description of what the workflow um, is. Um, the source um, of the workflow. And when we get down here to the topic and operation annotations, this is the first instance where um, there's missing metadata. Um, you'll note that this is optional, right? They're, they're not mandatory fields, but, I, but um, I would urge you to consider annotating your workflow as well. Um, and these fields um, are, um, are searchable. So they actually have um, Edom, for example, um, sitting, um, sitting um, behind the scenes. 
So if you if you do a search for something, um, you can select the right um, um, topic and operation directly um, um, in this interface. You can also indicate the maturity of your workflow. So you can say whether it's a work in progress or whether you consider it to be um, stable. You can modify the teams um, that are associated with the workflow. Um, so here I um, already belong to one team, uh, but it's possible that you might belong to multiple teams and you might then want to add those teams here or you might want to remove teams. So removing them, you just click the red cross um, and you select teams from this drop down menu. Um, for the license, you can see that it's been auto imported, but you can also change the license or assign a license here if there, if there isn't one already. You can add discussion channels um, or links to discussion channels if they exist for your workflow. Um, you should also review the sharing conditions. So this is who can see your workflow. Uh, so the way it's set up at the moment, um, everyone can view and download the workflow, um, but no one except um, the creator or the submitter can actually um, edit or manage um, that workflow. But you have multiple options for how to change this, uh, including restricting access um, and only granting access to those people uh, on Workflow Hub or those teams or spaces on Workflow Hub um, that need access. Um, there's then the custom tags section uh, where you can add um, any tag that you, that you need. Um, there's the creators section, which has been uh, automatically imported from the GitHub repository. And I'll go into a bit more detail uh, when we go back to the slides on, on how that um, actually works. Um, and finally, you can add other artifacts like presentations um, and documents if you want to. Um, there's also options for data files um, and annotating uh, your workflow with um, tools um, that are registered in um, the bio.tools registry. Once you're happy with um, the details that you've entered, you push register. Uh, workflow Hub will ask you if you're happy with the visibility settings. Then you push OK. And your workflow is now registered. Um, so we'll go through just in, a, in um, some brief, we'll go through briefly uh, what this now looks like and some various options. So um, you can see here that in the overview uh, for a Galaxy workflow, um, Workflow Hub will automatically pull out uh, the inputs, steps and outputs. Um, and it will include a version history of everything that's been registered on Workflow Hub. You might notice as well that there are actually additional tabs here. If you go over to files, um, you'll see that you can actually view um, these files directly within, um, within the registry. You can also go directly to the source with this button up the top you view on GitHub. Um, under the related items tab, um, you have all of those other elements of Workflow Hub that are related to this workflow. Um, including the people, the spaces, um, and, the, and the teams. Um, so right up the top, um, under actions, um, there are multiple options here, um, which, you'll, which you'll use to maintain a workflow. New version, I think is pretty self-explanatory. That's when you want to register a new version. Um, edit workflow um, allows you to go in and edit the metadata uh, for, for your workflow. So you can see here that you can edit everything from the description um, and annotations uh, through to visibility and um, the other artifacts we talked about earlier. Uh, under manage workflow, um, this is where you can um, manage things like the teams, again, the sharing, um, the creators, um, and you can also add um, sharing links. Um, and finally, you have the options here for delete workflow. 
which I think again is pretty self-explanatory, and the option to generate a DOI. Um, that's also available um, down here. So make sure your metadata is correct before you generate um, that, that DOI. Um, and down the right side here, you can see the creators and submitters are listed. So is the license. Um, you get some activity information as well. So the views and downloads um, of your workflow, the annotations that you entered um, and those custom tags um, as well. Um, so that's in essence, the whole workflow registration process. So when you're coming from a, from a Git repository, it's actually quite straightforward. Um, and you can see that there are wizards that actually guide you through um, that process. Um, so what we'll do now is come back to the slides. Um, and I wanted to take you through some um, hints for maintaining your workflow, um, or rather some, some suggestions uh, for things that you can do. Um, the first one is to um, include a citation file format file in your GitHub repository. Um, this is what that file looks like, so an example. Um, and there are two reasons to, to do that. The first one is that within GitHub, it um, activates this uh, citation option. And so anyone that finds your repository um, can work out how you want your work cited very easily. Um, and it also, as I showed before, has an impact on import to Workflow Hub. Um, so if you have a CFF file in your repository, Workflow Hub can automatically extract um, creator information from that. Um, the next one is to create a digital object identifier. So when your metadata is completed, um, this is what's going to allow people to create a persistent um, link to your workflow and even to the specific version of a workflow that, for example, you used in a research publication. Um, and so what that would look like is that this bit of text goes into the reference list in, in a research paper, for example, or on a website or any other kind of document where you talk about your, your workflow. Um, the next one is that um, there exist applications that you can uh, install on your GitHub repository that allow you to automatically update your Workflow Hub registry entries. Um, so the um, Life Monitor GitHub app is an example of one of these. Um, and it will register new releases of the workflow with the Workflow Hub um, registry. Um, and I've included a link here um, um, to the to the instructions for how to to how, how to set that up. Um, I would also urge the use of documentation templates. Um, so documentation is really, really important, uh, but just getting the structures right and setting up your documentation can be extremely time consuming. Um, the BioCommons has a set of guidelines for this uh, that have been informed by um, the needs of the community. But it's worth noting as well that there are community efforts out there for a lot of the um, for a lot of the popular workflow languages. And so one question might be, um, you know, should you contribute to those workflow community efforts instead? And what I mean by that is, if you're a um, Nextflow um, developer um, and you have a canonical workflow that you think would be a really good addition to NF Core, um, it might be worth you actually contributing that workflow to NF Core because big community efforts like that uh, are making efforts to ensure that their workflows are registered in registries, right? So you might save yourself the time um, by actually contributing to that um, to that community effort because uh, you'll end up in a registry anyway. Um, so that's all I wanted to say um, today. Um, I wanted to make sure to um, acknowledge um, the very large group of institutions, consortia and infrastructures that are actually contributing to this effort. Um, it all starts with that community of workflow developers, right? So the developers are absolutely critical to all of this. Um, 
Uh, I also wanted to specifically acknowledge um, the Workflow Hub team. Um, they are an open community. Um, you, anyone is welcome to join and provide feedback in um, feedback to that registry and how it um, and how it operates. Um, and obviously, a big thank you to the entirety of the Biocommons effort and the BYOD project.